Okay, alrighty. Good morning. So, we're going to just touch on our links. Uh, we spent a full week doing sort of geometry all of last week. I don't want to spend another <coughs> week on the same. Um, arc length is a little easier to understand, though, in terms of applications. So it's a lot, a lot, uh, so, so it's natural to at least mention it. And I mean, the idea of arc length is it's sort of in the name. If you have a curve, how long is that curve? Um, what is the distance that a car travels? <coughs> if a car travels along that road. I'm going to give a formula. You can go on Canvas. You can find where this formula comes from if you really want that information. But as I say, I don't want, I don't want this week to be arc length week. I want to just sort of present this material and move on. So we've got some function, f of x, we've got an interval from a to b, and we want to know how long this curve is. Now putting the formula on the board is easy enough. The arc length is the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared dx. Um, I said that putting it on the board was easy. We can almost never find this by hand. Which is another reason that I do not in the classroom want to dwell on this. It's almost impossible unless I want to teach everybody how to write like mathematical symbols in Canvas. It's almost certainly, it's almost always impossible for students to actually find these arc lengths. So it's very difficult on a practical level to write is about these, and my, my philosophy has always been that if you're not going to evaluate something, that means you don't really think it's that important, and you shouldn't be dwelling on it extensively. In the real world, outside of a classroom, you're not evaluating integrals by hand anyway. So this is a lot less of a barrier. I mean, I was going to say, I mean, computer algebra systems like MATLAB or Mathematica can find integrals for you. I mean, at this point, technology has advanced so far, you don't really even need dedicated computer algebra. Like, if you know anything about programming in Python, you can make Python find integrals for you. Um, let's at least look at an example. Let's see the kind of issues that show up when we are, um, when we are trying to find arc lengths and when we're sort of face to face with this formula. And there's no need to pick 
a nasty function here. I mean, even a relatively simple function like 2x, when you plug it into this formula, is going to give you something that's hard to work with. Let's say f of x equals 2x. on the interval from, oh, from zero to one. So we've got a curve. <clears throat> that looks like that. Here's zero, here's one. And let's investigate the arc length, the length of this curve. And up to the point where you're looking at the integral and trying to evaluate it, arc length is plug and play. We need a derivative f prime of x is 2x. Then we need the derivative squared. 2x squared is 4x squared. Finally, the integral of 1 plus the derivative squared under the square root. And the square root is what really really kills this, the square root of 1 plus 4x squared dx. So now that you've got this integral, let me copy it here so we have more room. Now that we've got this integral, what do we do with it? And having the square root is not like inherently fatal. I mean, the square root is a power. It's the one-half power and we do know how to integrate x to the one-half. But that's just the thing, and this is kind of the thing in a lot of integral calculus. We know how to integrate x to the one-half. We don't know how to integrate 1 plus 4x squared to the one-half. The fact that we have that complicated function instead of just x is a real problem. And, and we really only know one way we could possibly deal with this. That thing inside the square root is an inside function. Again, this terminology is very literal. <clears throat> and then this one half outside of the parentheses is an outside function. So you've got a composition, and the suggestion we've seen, the technique we know, what if we let u be the inside function? This is our u substitution <coughs> technique. Well, if we let u be the inside function, 
du is 8x, and then this whole process screeches to a halt. Because to finish the u substitution, well, 8x dx, I guess I should say, to be formal, to finish this u substitution, we need to have that 8x dx in this integral. And I mean, we've seen, okay, if we don't have the 8, whatever, we can throw in an 8, throw in a 1 over 8. That's not a real issue. But, but we don't have that. And, and not having the variable is fatal. So u substitution sort of grinds to a halt here. It's not a technique that allows us to integrate this. And in, in fact, we don't know any technique that allows us to integrate this. And this is how most of these problems are going to go. I mean, if you look at the arc length formula, these all look like U substitution in the sense that We've got an inside function, and we've got an outside function. But u substitution is basically never going to work, because if we let inside function, if we let u be the inside function, I mean, this square root's all we got. We don't have anything out here that's ever going to play the role of du. And I mean, you can create very artificial problems. Like, here is a function that was grown in a lab to let students finish out an arc length problem. But as I say, those are lab grown. We're basically never going to be able to compute these integrals by hand. We will, before the end of the course, by the way, we will learn about numerical estimation. So at the moment, I'm kind of waving my hand and saying, oh, a computer could do that. We will talk about how computers are finding these integrals in this course. But for now, that's arc length. And I mean, I might... I might go to the textbook and try to grab one of those hand, those lab-grown problems and put them on a quiz. I don't want to do that ten different times. So this 6.3 will probably end up just being an extra question on some other quiz. Speaking of which, quizzes aren't written yet. I didn't quite get to it. They'll go up either tonight or tomorrow. That should still give everyone plenty of time with a Sunday, uh, Sunday due date to get those done.